And so we were very worried about these closed source machines because we believe that people have a right to know how their votes are counted. How does open source relate to, to this, this whole process? Right. Um, well, okay, so we've got, we like to have, you know, open democracy, open elections. We like to have transparency in government. And having open source voting machines is an essential part of that. Um, so how can you trust something that you don't know how it works? Um, and it's been, you know, there, there are two problems. You can have um, malicious code embedded in the machine uh, left by some untrustworthy programmer. Um, or you can have simple error, um, simple bugs and mistakes. And um, regardless of whether you're a conspiracy theory nut or not, there have been plenty of errors and mistakes um, over the years. And open source software um, benefits from massive peer review. When you put uh, the source code to your program out on the internet, um, Everybody looks at it, and there's a phrase in the open source community, which is popular, given it enough eyes, all bugs are shallow. And actually, this applies to the Diebold's, uh, the Diebold memos. When we, when we um, got hold of the Diebold memos, um, we, were faced with a, we were faced with a choice. Um, we were trying to make a case that our use of the Diebold memos was fair use under copyright law, which means that even though the memos are copyrighted, we're still allowed to copy them. Um, there, are, there are four criteria for whether something is fair use or not. Um, for instance, uh, is it in the public interest that these memos should be published? Um, i say that would be yes. Um, and there are a couple others. Um, but the, the last criteria is how much of this the, the work, original work did you use? And we use the whole thing. We put the entire email archive out on the internet. Um, and Diebold says, you know, well, you should have selected um, the relevant, important memos. And but the problem was we have no way had no way of determining what was important, what was not in these thirteen thousand emails that we didn't have time to read. Um, and so what we did was we put out the entire email archive on the internet, and so that people could read through them. And Sure, sure enough, people found the bugs in the memos. They found the juicy material that people wanted to read. Um, and some of it was really non-obvious. It was things that we would never have picked up ourselves. Um, for instance, part of the reason Diebold was decertified in California was someone, someone, some election worker looking through the Diebold memos saw that the version numbers on the software that they were using were incorrect. Um, the machines we're using uncertified software in real elections. And we would never have known that the version numbers were incorrect. There was no way for us to pick that up. But because we open sourced the investigation, everyone could look at it and find what was important. OK. So Diebold, Diebold Election Systems makes uh, electronic voting machines, um, which are they're a very popular vendor. They're widely used throughout the country, and um, including during the Bush Gore election in 2000, during the California um, when when they when they threw out when they got put Schwarzenegger in office. Um, the recall. The recall. Recall. That's the phrase. Let me say, let me try that again. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> so Diebold, Diebold Election Systems makes electronic voting machines, which have been widely used around the country, including during the Bush Gore election in 2000, um, and in the California recall elections, and they are and in the primaries, and they've been there have been errors and problems all through um, all through these elections, and the memos reveal 